You might have heard by now that GitHub Copilot has free access, a free tier that you can use from github.com. You could use from Visual Studio if you're a .NET person, uh, any JetBrains IDE, and also, of course, VS Code, which is what I'm going to be showing you today. Now, you might be wondering, what does free even mean? We're going to get into that. And I'm also going to show you some tricks on how to optimize your Copilot experience. We're going to have some fun. All right, let's jump in. So let's start right here with the big question. What does free even mean, free access? Well, what you get when you enable Copilot for VS Code is you get 2,000 completions <laughs> per month. And what you just saw right there is a completion. You also get 50 chat requests per month. And a chat request is when you open the sidebar over here and you ask Copilot a question. Now I should also add here that if you want to optimize your completions, you can do that. Uh, you can do that project-wide by using this little icon down below, and you can disable completions for your entire VS Code experience. Or if you want, you can disable completions just for Markdown. That's what I do because Markdown is text, and well, I find that it's more useful to use Copilot with code. Enabling custom instructions for Copilot means that you have to open up a settings.json file in your project. And inside of here, uh, what we want to do is you want to set up the directive. Now, one of the things that you could do here is just ask Copilot, how do I do this? And there we go. So it'll tell you the settings you need to have. And so in, inside of here, we can just copy and paste. Now, if you don't want to use a chat session for that, you can just Google it and you can see custom instructions for GitHub Copilot. And there's actually a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, this is what I just did, code generation instructions. Um, and there's other ones too that we're gonna take a look at later on. Um, but you can also use a .github directory and have a copilot instructions.md file. And this is if your instructions are just text-based and they work um, just inside Markdown. But for us, we're gonna do something completely different. There we go. Code generation instructions. So what does this even mean? What are we doing? Well, what we're going to do is we are going to either attach a file to every chat session or we're going to attach a text blob. Uh, as you can see here, here's an example, use underscore for field names, or we're going to attach a file. So what I want to do is I'm going to attach a file. But as you can see, I don't have any instructions anywhere, which is why I'm going to drag them and drop them into my project. There we go. So now what Copilot's going to do for me is every time I have a chat session, it's going to attach these two things so that the response that it gives me back will have a lot more context to it. So what's in these files? Well, let's open it up. So right here, I have all my preferences for how I like to code things. And maybe yours is specific to your project, but it could also be specific to your team. So that's that. And then I also have specification for the store itself. And again, these are just in my documents. So why did I do all this? Why did I take time to do all this? Well, number one, it's a good idea in general to have a spec that you're working against. But two, now that I've attached it to Copilot, it's going to be a lot more aware of what I need. So for instance, what I might want to do here is I might want to say generate, generate a SQL i3 table schema for all the tables in my project. Well, how's it going to know what tables we're even talking about? Well, if we open this up, you can see it has automatically grabbed the workspace, but it's also attached our docs that we specified uh, for our custom instructions. So coming down here, you can see there we are. We have a SKU, a name, price, description. Now, how did it know all this stuff? Well, if I come over here to the spec, well, this is what I mentioned. Exactly, SKU, name, price, description, type. And it figured out on its own what I needed, including price in pennies, which I think is really neat. That's up here. Price is an integer. So this looks pretty good. I think what I'm going to do is create a new folder and call it DB. And then inside of here, I'm going to create a new file, tables.sql, and then copy this over. So what you've just seen is a very typical task where Copilot can help speed things up, but there's more we can do. Let's go back to settings.json. I'm going to show you a trick that I absolutely love. We are going to pull in that SQL file now. DB tables.sql. Good. And we are now going to generate our data access layer. Now the Copilot's aware of my SQL schema. It can use that together with my code style here. And down below here, you can see I have how I like to work with SQLize. I like to have a DB models directory table name uh, on every single model and so on. So what does that mean? What can we do now? Well, let's close this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up chat over here. And now I'm going to go over to edits because what I want is for Copilot to use this context to generate the data access. 
And there we go. Let's shrink this down a little bit. That's pretty good. Look at this. I've got an index.js right here. I've got a bunch of SQLized models and uh, that didn't take much time at all. And as you can see, it's got a table name just as I specified. And in index.js, it is instantiating SQLized very good based on the environment, which is nice. Uh, and it's <laughs> exporting the models. This is exactly what I like. Perfect. All right, I jumped the gun a little bit. Just went through a code review and my boss doesn't like the way that these models are defined. There's a number of different ways that you can define these models if you like. However, if you use a class and an actual model from the SQLize uh, package, then you can have uh, static methods and instance methods and so on. So what I've decided to do is come back over here and update my specification here for the code style. And as you can see, every model should follow this pattern where it extends the SQLize model. And then we can have an initialize function. And then you can see the schema goes there and so on. All right, so let's fix our models. I'm going to close all this up. I'm going to open up chat over here and I am going to open up editor and I'm going to just drag in this directory here to the working set, all of these. And I'm going to say refactor this. Now, normally I would have to probably go in here and write a long prompt, but now that I have added the context here, the references that is, uh, Copilot's going to know what I'm talking about and it's going to refactor my models for me. As you can see, class product extends model. That's exactly what I want to see. All right, there we go. Skipping ahead just a little bit. You can see we have uh, a lot of stuff here. I'll just go close this down. You can see that we have a lot of diffs in here with changed code. And each one of these files, as you can see, customer.js, inventory, each one is being tweaked to fit the way my boss likes to see things done with SQLize. So opening up the editor one more time, I'm just going to accept everything. And I'm going to save all files just like that. That refactor right there would have taken an hour or more, but instead, it took us just seconds with Copilot. You ever get a new boss, a new lead that comes in and says, I don't like this ORM tool that we're using. We need to use this other one. We need to use Prisma. SQLize is old. I don't know. I like SQLize, but some people really like Prisma. And I could see a new senior coming in saying, let's use Prisma. Well, all right, let's do it. As you can see, we've changed the spec around. Prisma ORM is here. We've also specified that we're using Prisma in the spec. So now what I can do is just go back over here and let's see how hard this is going to be for Copilot uh, to replace. There you are. And I'm going to use the editor for this because it is going to involve file changes. <laughs> We have, a, we have a number of things that have changed. So the nice thing is, is it's left our, left our old models alone. But what I can do here is I can just delete this. There we are. Now we have a Prisma schema. And coming through here, you can see that it has pulled all of the schema information out of our SQL file. That's nice. And created the schema for us. In addition, it has created model access. Hello from the editing desk. Uh, I wanted to pause really quickly because I didn't notice this when I was doing the recording. But what uh, Copilot actually did here for us was it created classes that mimicked the SQLized models. Prisma doesn't have this, uh, but instead what it's doing here is it's using Prisma under the covers and it's helping us with a refactor by creating models. So it makes it really easy. All we got to do is tweak a reference in our project and we can just keep going with all the model methods that we had before. So we have customer find all, find by ID, create, <laughs> which is using the Prisma customer and update and so on. That took very little time. But the idea here is that I didn't have to write some big long prompt. Uh, Copilot just knew what it needed to do. Copilot's done a lot for us, but there is still more that it can do. Uh, if you work at a company that uses GitHub to manage projects, then it's likely that they have standards for the commit messages other than fixed this. <laughs> so let's pop something in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add commit message generation instructions. And here's an example from a team that I used to work on. 
Uh, they want a detailed file changes and the reason for the change. You now you can change this as you like. Anyway, uh, they also demanded you had a hashtag at the end of a message to link to an issue number. And the idea was that you should always be working against an issue. Now, your company might do something different, but what I did want to show you is that if we come over now to the source control window, you can see we have a bunch of files that have changed here. And what we can do is we can hit the little AI symbol here, and it's going to generate the commit message for us using these instructions, which is kind of fun. There we go. This is pretty detailed. I like it. I'm going to commit this. So that's what working with Copilot on the daily looks like. And now I know you've all seen the demos where people make some flashy application in 30 minutes, but I figured it'd be more important for you to see what it would be like to have Copilot literally be your pair programmer, where it's helping you out doing some refactoring and then creating a better Git commit message and even doing a code review. That's something else that Copilot could do for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoy Copilot's free tier. Happy coding.